Typically notoriously bad, it's been a minute since we had movie tie-in video games that released on Xbox. Therefore, I am willing to give this one a chance. It may not have the voice talents of Dwayne Johnson and Kevin Hart like the main film, but that won't affect the gameplay. Find out if this is the movie tie-in that bucks the trend as DC League of Super Pets The Adventures of Crypto and Ace launches today on Xbox, PlayStation, PC, Nintendo Switch and Google Stadia. Crypto and Ace are the canine companions of Superman and Batman respectively. After uncovering a plot by Lex Luthor to kidnap the strays of Metropolis, they team up like their caped crusader owners to foil Luthor's plans. In terms of gameplay, it's a pretty basic on-rail shooter compared to other games of the same genre. If you like moving around in the same position on screen shooting enemies, then that's all you will find within this game. The game provides you with three different stages with five levels within each and at the end you will always have a short boss battle before progressing onto the next area. In total I managed to play through the entire game in less than two hours and I did think it was a bit short. I did also try my four year old son out with the game and he managed to finish it in under four hours and it just shows how much limited content is within the title but more on that later on. In the stages, it introduces you to three new side characters who work as special abilities once the meter has filled in game. They are Chip, who provides you with more firepower, Merton, who provides you with a speed boost, and PB, who gives you a personal shield. Each have their own upgrades, which you can level up to provide you with even more powers. In all honesty, it was great getting these additional characters. However, I always find myself using Chip for extra firepower. The game is not difficult at all, even for kids, and the abilities for shield and speed were absolutely pointless when more firepower is needed to take out stronger enemies. In terms of the shooting mechanics, the main two dogs that you'll be able to pick from are Crypto and Ace. It would have been nice to be able to play as more characters or at least have some more unlockable skins as the main two characters became increasingly boring as the game went on. Crypto comes with his heat vision and arctic bark abilities whilst Ace has his batarangs and shoulder charges. They will need these attacks to destroy everything Lex Luthor throws at them, including his dreadful Lex bots. Personally, I found that during gameplay, I was always using Ace, as the abilities he has on offer were infinitely better than Crypto in every single way. Having a beam that was stupidly hard to control was not the best, but Ace's lock on Batarangs was stupidly overpowered. Enemy types within the game are not as varied as what I've liked, and simply do the same shooting animation towards you every single time. You will find a couple of these shoot lasers at you in a different fashion such as circles but it was very lackluster and I was expecting a bit more. The addition of boss fights though on each of the last levels of each sector were great to see. Even though these sections were not that complicated it certainly made the level more enjoyable overall. Yes it's the same typical shooting of a specific area but each boss provided unique movement types and attack types and really spruced up the gameplay in a unique and fun way. I wish they provided more of this in the forms of mini bosses as I feel it was a really massively wasted opportunity. After completing each level you are rewarded with skill points to upgrade your own personal abilities and the sidekicks that you require. Alongside this during each level there are also a few trapped pets that you will collect and these can be adopted at your own RAN adoption center. So let's have a look at these additional areas of the game. Well on the left hand side of the main screen you will have access to the pet adoption center. This is an area which collates all the trapped pets that you have rescued during your missions. First of all, you will have to match up the pet's interests with the specific objects on the right hand side of their card. This makes them happier before putting them up for adoption. Once they are happy, they will be ready to find their perfect human companion. The adoption screen will give players up to six human characters, each with their own unique interests and hobbies, and it's your job to match them with their perfect pet. This is essentially a game of snap and the better the match, the more the progress bar moves at the top hand corner of the screen. Once you have matched a pair, the game will grade you and your progress will move up and this can give you more skill points to upgrade your own characters in game. This is a nice addition to the gameplay, especially as it incentivizes you to collect more pets in the missions. However, the only downside is, is that after you've reached a max level, then this section becomes pointless and you'll never have to touch it again. It's a bit of a waste for a very unique idea. Now onto the right hand side of the screen and you have Crypto, Aces and the Sidekicks ability screen. This is where you can upgrade the dog's health and stamina or provide your sidekicks with better powers. This is a nice feature and gives a fairly basic level system to the game. 
So what did I not like about this game overall? As I mentioned earlier on in the review, the game does not have a massive amount of content and I've pretty much summed up everything there is to do in the game. You have 15 levels which include 3 boss fights and some light ability and trading mechanics, and all of which can be completed within a couple of hours. I usually find that kids games, especially licensed ones, have more content that's on offer than this game. Recent kids games like Ryan's World and My Little Pony provide more content and cost the exact same as this title. Alongside this, the gameplay and environments can become very dull and sometimes a bit irritating. The level design is very much the same, but you raise up the levels in the city. On the first few levels of each sector, you're nearer the street, and by the end you're on the rooftops, but the gameplay is exactly the same with a couple new enemies thrown in. The environment can also become a pain as there were many times I wanted to dodge but the screen would suddenly change direction without a clear line of where it wants to go. It's an annoyance and requires luck instead of skill. So, overall, how would I rate DC League of Super Pets the game? Well, the game is very basic, short and lacks any depth. The lack of content overall in this experience bewilders me and there was so much more that could have been offered. The addition of skill points and an adoption center is nice but does not add a lot of fun to an already boring game. I was shocked to see the price of this title and would certainly recommend other kids games such as Ice Age or Ryan's World before even considering this game. 3-4 to four hours of content for a 4 year old child is not enough and when the content is bland and doesn't change much over time, it's clear to see that this game was more made to capitalise on the movie that's releasing very soon. I would give this game overall a 4 out of 10, as it does have a few redeeming qualities but the overall experience was unfortunately very poor. So that's my review, make sure you like and subscribe for more reviews every single week. My name is Fletcher from PSX Cloud and I will see you all in the next video.